Hello and welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a dynamic health bar. Um, it's just gonna instantiate itself, just like this. Bam, when I left click, uh, the player's gonna take damage, obviously, and it's gonna go up and then disappear. And I just can do it as many times as I want to, and we are always going to be able to see it from any angle. Like if I go here, and it's just gonna be in front of all the other objects at all times. So let's get into it. And as always, you can get this scene and the end scene uh, from the links down below. So what we have here is a simple first person controller from the Unity Asset Store and just a zombie script. And a zombie prefab. So the zombie script does the thing that is a move zombie script and it just moves the zombie around in circles and rotates them. The bigger the radius, the bigger the circle and the movement speed is. So, the first thing we want to do is select our zombie prefab right here, the game object, and right click on it and create an empty game object. Let's call this the uh, damage pop up the parent. Double click on it and select this too, and just drag and drop it where you want your damage pop up to spawn at, and this is good for me. Right click on it again, create an empty game object, rename this to damage pop up. And let's call it prefab. And reset the transform if it's not reset. And then just add the text mesh pro slash text. Not the UI, not the input field, just the text. And now I just try to write in something like 20. And first of all, center it, and I already play around with the uh, settings. So the material is like this, just a red color. Uh, this hexadecimal code and 0.2 on the point, say, point 0.2 on the dang it, point 0.2 on the dial light, softness zero, and then just a black outline with thickness of 0.16. I could make this 0.2. Errors, technical error sometimes is fun. Disable the wrapping. It's just if you hover over it, we don't want it to reach the next lines. And what we want to do now is just scale down the font size to something like that's still too big. Let's see, three. Yep, that's that looks decent the size of it. And then select the rec tool, click on one side, hold Alt, and just scale the canvas down so it just about fits the damage pop up dang it I can't click on this side okay click on it help alt left alt and then do it again and zoom in and again and again like that and don't worry that we display the damage pop up we cannot really see through the character we will be doing some stuff with that for the layer we want to change it so add a layer let's call this let's say in game UI and then go to the damage pop-up again and click the in-game UI layer like that. And this is now a different layer. Don't tag it, nothing, and we're probably done with that. So create a prefab folder if you haven't already and drag and drop your prefab in there. And then just delete it from the scene like that. Bam. Next up, go to your scripts folder create a C sharp script let's call this the hell say manager go oh, no, not manager controller and open it up in your favorite editor and for now delete these and just make a public void take damage and it's going to take an amount to say integer and just make a comment for now, spawn health bar. And in the update, private right update, we want to just check if we hit the mouse button, the left mouse button, then put that dot get mouse button and the zero mouse button and then call the take damage function and pass in let's say a random dot range from like ten to twenty five. This is just for our purpose. In a normal game, you want to call this function from like your ray casts or whatever you have as a source of damage. 
bullet hit or whatever, right? So you want to spawn the health bar and yeah, that's about it for the health script. Save that, go back to your editor and create another C sharp script. So right click, create C sharp script and let's call this the damage pop-up. Again, open it up in your favorite editor and what do we want to do here? This script is just going to instantiate our health bar. We want to move the damage pop up uh, upwards over time and then just destroy it after like some time and also fade away and rotate it towards the player. So that's quite a lot we want to do in here. So we, first off, we need a private reference to our text mesh pro text, which means that we want to be using a uh, PM Pro like that, and now we want a private text mesh pro text mesh pro, and let's call it text mesh. We also want a private color so we can change the color over time. Dang it, color, let's call this text color, and a private transform. Private transform, let's call this player transform. So we can look at the player, change the change the alpha, which means a fade out, and the text mesh pro is just a reference to our text. We also want a private float, let's call this disappear time. which let's say 0.5 and a private fade out speed let's call this 5 let's make it 5 and then a private float move uh, let's say y speed this is just going to be the speed at which we move in the y direction like upwards obviously you can change these however you like, it's just some values I tried out and they look decent. And now make a public function, let's call this the set up function and a end amount. We want the damage amount. Oh boy, what was this? Set up like that. Public. Okay, I always forget the void. Like that, yep. Yeah. So, so first off we want the text mesh to be the get, to get a component called text mesh pro like that so we can have a reference and we don't have to drag and drop it and also let's the player search for the player transform and this is going to be a game object dot find our game objects with tag and search for the player tag and this is important we about transform, um, you have to tag your player, like this game object right here, the player FPS controller right here, as the tag player right here. This is very important. The first person controller has to be tag player, so we can actually find it. You can also go for camera that name. Might be even a better way. So let's, I guess, do that. Let's go for the game object find with the player transform. Let's do just a camera dot main dot transform. Might be even better, right? So let's go for that. Next up, we want to get the color. So the text color is equal to text mesh dot so by text text mesh dot color. So we can change the alpha channel over time. And also let's set the text, text mesh dot set text and just pass in the amount and to string, just like that. Just that's basically almost all we need to do. Now where the magic happens is the late update. Update. First thing we want to do is just change the transform from the uh, from this game object, the damage pop-up, so it always uh, looks towards the player and we have to do it like this two times transform that position uh, minus 
player transform that position because um, uh, else if we just go look at the tr uh, player transform that position it's gonna be rotated by 180 degrees and we won't really see the text so this is just a way to rotate it around by 180 degrees and then ch update the position we want to add a new vector 3 and let's go for 0 float because we don't want to change it on the x-axis then the move speed times time dot delta time so it's the same on every machine and then 0 float and this just moves our transform upwards move upwards so our damage papa kind of flies away and we are only moving on the y axis by our moves move y speed right here and next up we want the disappear type this appeared dang it disappear timer then we want to subtract the time dot delta time from that one and also check if the disappear timer is less or equal to zero f which means that we want to start lowering the alpha of our um, game object and now we just go to text color dot alpha and subtract the fade out speed times time dot delta time we just want to lower the alpha of the damage pop-up and then set the text mesh text mesh dot color to the text to the new updated text color like that and just check again if we the text color dot alpha is less or equal to zero float which means that the text does not have any alpha at all we just destroy the text destroy the game object right there so what we do here is we change the rotation of the object so the damage pop-up always faces the camera next up we move it upwards we change the disappear timer which is just uh, 0.5 seconds once we go below 0.5 seconds of the existence of this game object we start lowering the alpha channel and then we update the color and check if the alpha is lower than zero or equal to zero we destroy this game object since we cannot see it at all we just destroy it so that's about it for this script and what we want to do now is add the script to our damage prefab so go to the prefabs folder uh, damage pop-up i mean so go to our prefabs folder click on the damage pop-up and just add the damage pop-up script like that go to our scripts folder and let's create a c sharp script and call this the damage pop-up manager open that up in your favorite editor again and this is going to be a very simple script first off we want a singleton so let's make a region it's called a single ton and end region and here we want a public static damage pop thing it damage pop up manager it's called this instant and in the awake function just if check if the instance is equal to null then assign the instance to this and else well we kind of fucked up so destroy the game object and just debug dot debug dot log um, we fucked This should actually never happen. This is a big error if it happens. So just in case, you know, if you have two damage pop-up managers, just well, destroy one right away. Don't think about it. Next up, we want a serialized field, a private game object, thing is game object. Let's call this damage pop-up pop up prefab, and then a public Damage, let's call this display damage pop up. So, what do we need for this function? We obviously need a amount, 
and let's make a transform and call this pop-up parent like so and all we want to do is just make a game object call this game object and instantiate a damage pop-up prefab next up we want to instantiate it at the pop-up parent dot transform dot position and next up we just put running the identity doesn't matter we change the rotation right away and then the parent of the game object is going to be the pop-up parent obviously like that next up the damage pop-up uh, okay now i mean the game object right here game object we want to get the component and this is called damage pop-up right there and we want to call the setup function with the amount amount like so and that's about it and the only thing that's left to do is first off create a empty game object just in the hierarchy somewhere and create an empty game object and call this the ui manager and add the damage pop-up manager script to that and go to the prefabs folder and drag and drop the damage pop-up prefab in there and next up a very important thing go to the first person control or any controller you have go to the camera then right click on the first person controller right here on the top and create a camera the camera has to be below the first person controller uh, if you remember we had that problem that in the scene view we could not see the damage pop up right here i'll show it to you right there okay go to the zombie right here see the zombie has priority over it because it parts of the uh, number are inside the zombie but we always want to show this number on top of the zombie right so what we want to do is make a different camera for this layer right we change the layer to the in-game ui right here now go to first person controller calling mask and the in-game UI has to be checked off right here this is good now go to our new camera right here let's rename this to in-game UI cam and change the clear flex to depth only we don't really need to render the skybox and also uh, where is, uh, is the calling mask right here from everything just go to nothing and then just the in-game ui right here see nothing else than the in-game ui is being rendered right now by this camera one more very important thing is that the in-game ui camera right here has to be a child of the first person character camera right here we have the uh, first person character camera with the main camera tag which is also very important again and this has to be a child of this game object so we move around with it at all times so if we start the game right now and i also duplicated zombies so if i hit the left mouse button the damage pop-up appears if i move around the camera from top to bottom the damage pop-up position does not change right here right there and it always stays the same and does not move around that's why we have to parent where we have to child this game object to the main camera. So if you enjoyed this video, consider so, so if you enjoyed this video and learned something, hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. See ya in the next one.